Hi guys, um, today we are going to be adding and subtracting adding and subtracting functions. Before we do, let's go ahead and review how do we add and subtract polynomials. If we can successfully add and subtract uh, polynomials, then adding and subtracting functions is just like the next step over. So let's do this. So the question is, how do we add polynomials? I love adding polynomials. Okay, to add polynomials, all we have to do is combine like terms. To subtract two polynomials though, it's not as straightforward. We can't just like combine like terms. So first we have to write the subtraction problem as a related addition problem and then take it from there. Okay, so let's go ahead and knock out fun problem number one. So the directions read add or subtract the polynomials as indicated. So the question is, how do I know if I'm supposed to add or subtract? Well, we have two polynomials. Look at the look at what separates them. If an addition sign if an addition sign separates them, then I guess it's an addition problem. If uh, if the polynomials are separated by a subtraction sign, then I guess you are to subtract. For polynomial addition, you know what? If you want to go straight to answer, go for it. But I'm not at the same level as you are, so you know me. I'm gonna show all my work. So I'm going to look at the first polynomial. We don't have anything in front of the parentheses, so there's nothing to distribute. Let's go ahead and bring down the terms as is. So we have 3x squared minus 6. I know that you know that the addition sign will not affect the value of any of the terms that follow it, so we can safely bring down the terms from the second polynomial as is. 4x is positive, so let's go ahead and write down the plus 4x. 3 is negative, so let's go ahead and write down minus 3. But again, if you feel comfortable to go straight to answer, go for it. Uh, all, of, all the grouping symbols are gone, so let's go ahead and uh, combine like terms, uh, ideally writing it in descending order. In English, writing it from highest power to lowest power. So we have only one squared term, so let's go ahead and bring it down. We have only one x term, let's go ahead and bring it down. But we have two constant terms. Let's go ahead and add them up. And the sum of negative 6 and negative 3 will give us negative 9. Fantastic. So one problem down, one more to go. Problem B. We have two polynomials separated by a subtraction sign. So let's go ahead and subtract. Let me go ahead and bring down, bring down the first polynomial and omit the parentheses. So we have 3x squared plus 7x minus 6. And then we take care of the subtraction sign, however you like. You know, as a teacher, I'm like, let's go ahead, you know, add the opposite. As a student, I'm going to say, um, distribute the negative. No one's going to know uh, what your thought process is. So don't worry, we're all going to write the same three terms. As we add the opposite, opposite of a positive term is a negative term. Opposite of a positive term is a negative term. Opposite of a negative term is a positive term. Okay, it would have been nice if I put my annotations all the way, but nice doesn't always happen. All right, let's take our time, combine like terms, and then with confidence, we'll tell the reader what the difference is. When we combine the squared terms, 3x squared minus x squared will give us 2x squared. When we combine the regular x's, 7x minus 4x will give us 3x. And when we combine the constant terms, sum of negative 6 and positive 3, last time I checked, will give us negative 3. So again, if you're cool adding and subtracting polynomials, adding, yeah, if you're cool adding and subtracting polynomials, adding and subtracting functions, it's just going to be the um, same thing, but it's going to seem... Um, a little bit more challenging because of the function notation. But again, just stick with fun problem number one and fun problem number, number two through whatever will follow. Okay, so here we have uh, the definition of the sum and difference function. So we have two functions, namely f and g. And then we have the sum function, which you can read. Okay, but I'm going to try to break it down. Okay, so we have some problem f plus g of x. So we have two functions separated by an addition sign, so I guess we're supposed to add them. Okay, how are we going to add them? We're going to take this first function, f, which is a function of x. Oh, you know what? Let me just go ahead and write it. Okay, I don't like covering it. Okay. So we have f plus g of x. Okay, what does this mean? So this is saying we're going to take this function, f. f is a function of x. The operation is plus, so we're going to add to it. Add to it what? The next thing that we see, which is g. 
and g is a function of x okay so we need to have a clear idea of what we are being asked to find in order for us to have a fair shot so if i give you this problem and i say quick you know find f plus g of x i need you to handle it it's like oh we got it i'm gonna take this function add to it the second function oh, i need to clean the ink i'll do that later during the break all right what if i give you another problem f minus g of x how are we going to handle that? So we're going to take the first function. f is a function of x. Operation is minus, so we're going to subtract from it the second function, which is also a function of x. So that's the definitions of the sum and difference functions. So we have two ways to go about it. So let's let's go. I'm going to... I'm going to go ahead and guide you with these types of solutions. And then that way we can see like both solutions at the same time. And then we'll do two more problems. All right. So fun problem number two reads, let f of x equal x squared minus 9 and h of x equals x minus 3. And the question is find f plus h of negative 2. Okay, so not only do they want us to uh, add these functions, namely f and h, they want us to evaluate the sum at negative 2. So uh, again, I'm going to give you two ways to go about it, and then you can pick your favorite way. Of course, on the quiz or test, you only do it one way. Okay, so option one. So option one. Uh, pretty much uh, add the functions now and then evaluate later. Option two, evaluate now and then add later. Okay, too many words. Let's do this. So we have f plus h of x. So what are we going to do? We're going to take the first function, namely f, and then add to it the second function. Okay, uh, I'm going to give you like a handwritten detailed solutions in the, in the, in the next page. Okay, so we're going to take function f, f of x. So we take function f, which is a function of x, and that's given by x squared minus 9. What are we going to do to it? We're going to add to it the second function, namely h of x, and then add to it x minus 3. And by some miracle, the sum gives us x squared plus x minus 12. Fantastic. So we know what the sum is, but now we want to evaluate that sum at negative 2. So what are we going to do? We're going to substitute a negative 2 for the input of x. So we have x, which is given by negative 2. We're going to square it, add to it x, which we're substituting with negative 2. And then we bring down the rest of the problem. So let's go ahead, take our time, punch it in, and make sure we don't make a careless mistake. Square of negative 2 is positive 4. Adding negative 2 is the same, same thing as subtracting 2. And then we bring down the rest of the problem. Let's keep moving forward. Difference of 4 and 2 is 2. And the difference of 2 and 12 will give us negative 10. So the moral of the story is that uh, f plus h of negative 2 equals negative 10. So we're going to do this one more time, uh, but a slightly different technique. So uh, again, option 1 is um, add the functions now. So I'm going to write add now, evaluate later. Meaning, you know, add the functions now and then evaluate that sum later. Option two is, uh, no, we want to evaluate now. And then add later. Okay. So we have f plus h of negative 2. What does that mean? We're going to take the first function, evaluate it at negative 2, operation plus, Add to it the second function, evaluate it at negative 2. Okay, so we know what f of x is. Now we want to know what f of negative 2 is. So we'll substitute a negative 2 for the input x, and by some miracle, that will give us negative 5. Now we want to know what h of negative 2 is. So we have that h of x equals x minus 3. When we substitute a negative 2 for the input x, that will give us negative 5. So for the grand finale, what is that sum evaluated at negative 2? So we're going to take the first function evaluated at negative 2, add to it the second function evaluated at negative 2. For more hard work that someone did earlier, we have that f of negative 2 is negative 5 and then we're going to add to it h of negative 2 which happens to be also negative 5 it's not always the case 
We keep our cool. Sum of negative 5 and itself will give us negative 10. So it's not a surprise that we get the same answer because it's the same exact problem. And if we got a different answer, then I was going to start crying. Okay, so we did, um, we, uh, expressly did a, an addition problem let's go ahead do a quick subtraction problem but then we'll actually do everything um from the beginning we'll do one addition problem from start to end one one subtraction problem from start to end but i wanted to give you the side by side comparison uh together hopefully that makes sense okay so let's go ahead and look at the subtraction one okay so we had let f of x equal x squared minus 9 so same problem same function and then h of x equals x minus 3 oh i guess i didn't feel like being creative i took the same two functions we want to find f minus h of negative 3 so again you have two ways to go about it on a quiz or test handle it however you like so option one would be subtract now and then evaluate later okay remind, remind me of a song but i love my job so i'll keep my thoughts to myself okay option two evaluate now evaluate now and then subtract later so pretty much uh we have to do both things. We have to subtract and we have to evaluate. The question is, which one do you want to attack first? Okay, <coughs> so let's do this. If we subtract now, we're going to take F, subtract from it H of X with some magic that gives us X squared minus X minus 6. Oh, I forgot to like bring down what this is. Okay, once we subtract, then we can evaluate that difference okay so we have that the difference is given by x squared minus x minus 6 so let's go ahead evaluate it at negative 3 so to do that we're gonna substitute a negative 3 for the input of x so that will give us x which is negative 3 we are squaring it subtract from it x which is negative 3 and we bring down the rest of that expression okay let's take our time order of operations do what you gotta do square of negative 3 will give us 9 subtracting negative 3 is the same as adding 3 and then we bring down the rest of the problem sum of 9 and 3 where am I will give us 12 and the difference of 12 and 6 is 6. So the moral of this story is that f minus h of negative 3 equals 6. So let's go ahead and do it again. You know, with the with the uh, semi-type solution. And then verify that we'll get the same answer. Okay. So option 2, evaluate now and subtract later. So we are going to take f, evaluate it at negative 3. Operation minus. Take the second function, h, and evaluate at negative 3, okay? So from the problem, we have that f of x equals x squared minus 9. We do some magic and we find out that f of negative 3 gives us 0. Now let's go ahead and evaluate h at negative 3. So we have that h of x equals x minus 3. We take our time and we find out that h of negative 3 equals negative 6. For the grand finale, now let's go ahead subtract. We evaluate it now. Now it's time to subtract later. So we have that f of negative 3 minus h of negative 3. f of negative 3 gives us 0 minus, so from like here, okay. f of negative 3 gives us 0. h of negative 3 equals negative 6. And last time I checked, difference of 0 and negative 6 will give us 6. Cool. So, again, I wanted to give you uh, the different solutions side by side. And, of course, it's not the same thing uh, to fill in the blanks versus doing it from the beginning. So, guess what? It is time for us to do it from the beginning. All right. So, uh, we have let f of x equals x squared minus 9. That sounds familiar. g of x equals 2x. Oh, look at a third function. h of x equals x minus 3. And then we are asked to find g plus h of negative 1 fourth. So, we are going to do this problem twice. You know, um, add now, evaluate later. And then second time around, 
um, evaluate now, add later. Of course, I'm not going to be able to write them side by side, so you're going to bear with me, okay? So let me just go ahead, put option one. So we have, we want to find F plus G. Uh, uh, wrong problem, okay? Find G plus H of negative one fourth. Okay, so what are we going to do? So I'm just going to put a little love note. Okay, add now, evaluate later. If I wanted to write an essay, I will write uh, first add the functions G and H and then evaluate that sum at negative one fourth but you know we're like this pretend you can see my face okay we're like this you know we're tight so that's why i just gave you the summary okay add the functions now and evaluate later so let's go ahead add now okay so we're gonna write g plus h and then i'm gonna just put of x because we want to add first and then evaluate later okay so let's go ahead and apply the definition of the sum function so we're going to take the first function that we see which, which happens to be a function of x the operation is plus so we're going to add to it the second function that we see which is a function of x fantastic so we have g of x where am i g of x is 2x and then we're going to add to it h of x where am i which is x minus 3 take your time combine like terms and that will give us some of the variable terms will give you 3x and there's only one constant term now you don't have to write down the g plus h of x but because this is not my answer i want to tell myself what equals 3x minus 3 okay and then i'm gonna be like oh the sum of g and h equals 3x minus 3 so we add it now is now later let's evaluate the sum okay so we want to find uh we want to find the sum so let me just go ahead write uh what the sum is i guess i could have written below but i'm not sure if i'm gonna have enough space so that's why i did a new column okay we know what the sum is let's take our time and find the difference so we have g plus h of negative one fourth fantastic so let's go ahead substitute a negative one fourth for the input of x so that will give us three times input of x which is negative one fourth and then we'll subtract three from it take your time do what you gotta do okay product of three and negative one fourth will give us excuse me <coughs> negative three fourths multiply across bring down the rest of the problem sum of negative three-fourths and negative three or difference of negative three-fourths and three will give us negative three and three-fourths okay the only reason why i can do it in my head is because we have two negative numbers so you know how do we add two numbers that have the same sign add them up and keep the side but if you want me to bust out a thinking area i sure can Okay, so if I bust out a thinking area, we have negative 3 fourths minus 3, and then we write equivalent fractions. Okay, so in this case, there's only one denominator, so guess what? That is the LCD. We're going to write 3 as an equivalent fraction with denominator 4, so we're going to multiply top and bottom by 4, and that we will tell the world that negative 3 is the same as 12 over 4. We take our time. When we subtract the numerators, negative 3 minus 12, I believe is negative 15. And then we uh, write the difference over the common denominator. So of course they don't look the same, but this is the mixed number equivalent. Excuse me. So I'm going to write or negative uh, 12 plus 3 is 15 over 4. Which one do I want to see? Whatever your heart desires. You can even put the decimal form. Okay, if that uh, speaks to you, then go for it. But please only box one. I'm gonna write down the first one that I saw. Um, I don't, I don't have the book with me, but I'm almost positive. I'm also, I have a feeling that they will write the improper fraction, but I don't care. Again, decimals are always welcomed as long as you don't round. Cool. So we know. Uh, so we we just found g plus h of negative one fourth. Uh, but we're going to do it again for fake extra credit, okay? So option two, 
So we're gonna, uh, let me just go ahead and write down the problem. So find g plus h of negative one fourth. So we're gonna do it a uh, slightly different, not necessarily easier or tougher, just just a little bit different. So what are we gonna do it? We're gonna evaluate now and then add later. Evaluate now, add later. Okay, so now let me say my essay. So first we're gonna evaluate each function at negative one fourth. And then once we know what that is, we'll take their sum, okay? So let's go ahead and apply the definition of the sum function. So we're going to take function g and evaluate it at negative 1 fourth. Operation is plus, so we're going to add to it the second function and evaluate it at negative 1 fourth. So you kind of see it like two puzzles, okay? So let's go ahead and find g of negative one fourth. With your permission, first I'm gonna find the I'm gonna first I'm gonna write down what function g is according to the problem. Uh, function g uh, g of x is just two x. Oh, that's my kind of function. Okay. Then what are we gonna do thereafter? We're gonna evaluate g at negative one fourth. So let's go ahead substitute a negative one fourth for the input of x. Okay, so that will give us 2 times the input of x, and that is negative 1 fourth. Do what you got to do, write it as a fraction, write it as a decimal, it doesn't really matter. I usually don't carry my calculator with me, so this is why I keep it as fractions. 2 and 4 have a common factor of 2. 2 goes into itself once and into 4 2 times. When we multiply across, that will give us a negative 1 half. If this was my answer, I would box it and move on. But because this is just a piece of the puzzle, I want to tell myself what equals negative one half. I'm going to be like, oh, g of negative one fourth equals negative one half. Okay, one puzzle down, one part down, one more to go. Okay, so now we want to find h of negative four. So for me, I'm not a big fan of plugging and chugging. So I will always write down the function first and then I will write what I'm trying to find. Okay, so function h according to the problem, where am I? Hmm. h of x equals x minus three. Okay, I'm going to pretend like I have a good memory. Okay, h of x equals, what was it again? Uh, x minus three. Thanks. So then with confidence, we're going to go ahead and evaluate uh, h or this function at negative one fourth. So to do that, we're going to substitute a negative one fourth for the input of x. So that will give us x, which we are going to replace it with negative one fourth and then subtract from it three. Fantastic. So we are adding two numbers that have the same sign. So let's go ahead and uh, add them up and keep it signed. Again, if you, uh, I can bust out a thinking area. So we have negative one fourth minus three. There's only one denominator, so check it out. The LCD is just the one denominator that you see. Take your time, write those equivalent fractions. Okay, we're gonna write three as an equivalent fraction with denominator of four. When we do, we're gonna multiply that three top and bottom by four, and then we will tell the world that three is once again the same as 12 over four. We take our time, and when we do, the difference of negative one and 12 is negative 13, and then we write the difference over the common denominator of four, okay? So we'll get the mixed number, negative three and a fourth, or the improper fraction, negative 13 fourths, or the uh, decimal, which I think is like negative 3.25, but don't quote me on that. So let me go ahead, write down, and give the people what they want, which is the improper fraction. So with that being said, a different way to go about you know, uh, adding functions and evaluating them, um, e evaluate now, add later. We just finished evaluating each function. Now we can safely add later. Okay, so we have g plus h of negative one half. We're gonna take g of negative one half, which is negative one half, and then add to it h of negative one half, which is a uh, negative thirteen fourths. Okay, this plus minus action is in my way, so let's go ahead just write it as a straight subtraction problem. 
So minus 13 fourths. This problem is out of my comfort zone, so I'm totally going to show my work. The least common denominator between 2 and 4 is 4. So let's go ahead, take our time, and write this equivalent fractions. When we do, we will tell the world that 1 over 2 or a half is the same as 2 fourths. So that will give us negative 2 fourths minus 13 fourths. We already did this problem, so if we don't get the same answer, I'm going to start crying. But lucky for us, you're not going to see any tears because negative 2 minus 13 will give us negative 15. And then we're going to write that difference over the common denominator. When we did this problem the first time around, we told the world that g plus h of negative 1 half equaled, where am I, equaled negative 15 fourths, or its equivalent. We did it slightly different, and then we got the same answer. Okay, so what are we going to do next? We're almost done. Okay, we're going to do another problem. We're just going to swap it out for minus, and then we'll do it two different ways, and we're out. Bear with me. <coughs> All right, guys, so let's go ahead, take those same three functions, and then answer the following. So we are asked to find g minus f of negative 3, okay? So we want to subtract, we want to find the difference. We want to subtract these functions and then evaluate that difference of negative at negative 3. So uh, same speech, you have two ways to go about it. You can sub, uh, subtract now and evaluate later, or you can say, just kidding. We're going to evaluate now and subtract later. There's not an easier way. It's just, uh, it's a... Uh, Whatever makes you feel better, that's how I want you to do it. So um, let's go ahead, do this problem twice, and then we're good. Okay, so option one. Okay, so let me just go ahead, write down what we want to find. So find g minus f of negative 3. So the question is, why am I giving you three functions but only need g and f? It's because I want to make sure, like, are you really paying attention to the problem? Okay, so option one, subtract now and evaluate later. So let me just put a little love note. Subtract now, evaluate later. Okay, let's go ahead, subtract now and evaluate later. Okay, so we want to find the difference first. So we want to find g minus f of x. So let's go ahead and write down the definition of the difference function. So we're going to take function g, which happens to be a function of x, operation minus. So we're going to subtract from it the second function that we see, which is also a function of x. All right, let's do this. We have the game plan, so let's go ahead and follow it. So we have that g of x equals, where am I? Sorry, g of x is a 2x minus f of x, which is x squared minus 9, okay? The popular mistake is that students will put the minus sign, will put the function, but check it out. I'm not really subtracting f of x. I'm not really subtracting x squared minus 9. On paper, the only thing that I'm subtracting is actually x squared minus 9 and not the entire, sorry, on paper, the only thing that I'm subtracting is just the x squared and not the entire x squared minus 9. So in this case, what I want to point out, you need to wrap it up. It is a popular mistake, one that I'm confident that you won't make. So let's do this. So let's take our time. Let's go ahead, clear the grouping symbols by adding the opposite. Opposite of a positive term is a negative term. Opposite of a negative term is a positive term. Uh, None of these are like terms. We're good. If you're good with this, I'm good with this. If you want to put it in descending order, knock yourself out. I'm not going to, okay? So if this was my answer, I would box it and move on. But because this is only a, a piece of the puzzle, I want to tell myself what equals that. It's like, oh, it's the difference that equals that, okay? It's G minus F of X that equals that. So we just subtracted, now it's time for later. So let's go ahead, evaluate that difference at negative three. So we have G minus F of negative three. We know what the difference is, it's that, two X minus X squared, two X minus X squared plus nine. Now we just need to evaluate the difference at negative three. So to do that, we're gonna substitute a negative three for the input of X. So let's do this. So we have two, times x, which we, which is negative 3, we're going to subtract from it the square of x. Value of x is negative 3, 
and then we have to square it and then we'll bring down the plus nine so we did it guys let's just go ahead uh crunch out the numbers product of two and negative three is negative six minus square of negative three is nine and then we bring down the rest of the problem okay uh difference of negative six and negative nine i don't know okay but i do know that the sum of negative 9 and 9 is 0. So I'm going to attack what comes to me. Okay. So the moral of this story is that the sum evaluated at negative 3 is negative 6. If you're good with this solution, I'm good with the solution. But I need to give you both ways. So that way on the test, you can do it however you like. Okay. So let's go ahead, do option 2, and we're out. Okay. Option 2, let me go ahead and write down the problem. That would be nice. G minus F of negative 3. So option 2 would be uh, evaluate now, subtract later. Okay. <coughs> evaluate now, subtract later. So let's do this. So we are gonna go ahead. We are going to go ahead and apply the definition of the difference function. So we're gonna take this first function, evaluate it at negative three. Operation is minus. So we're gonna subtract from it the second function, evaluate it at negative three. Okay. We got two uh, pieces of the puzzle. Let's do this. Okay. We wanna find g of negative three and f of negative three. So let's go ahead, write down what g of x is, and according to the problem, uh, what was it again? Mm, 2x. g of x equals 2x. Oh, I hope this one's on the test. Let's go ahead, evaluate it at negative 3. So we are going to substitute a negative 3 for the input of x, and if my eyes don't fail me, product of 2 and negative 3 will give us negative 6. Same speech. If this was the answer, I would box it and move on. But it's only a piece of the puzzle, so I want to tell myself what equals negative 6. I'm like, oh, g of negative 3 equals negative 6. Let's go ahead and evaluate f. Let's go ahead and evaluate f at negative 3. So first I'm going to write down what f is. So f of x, according to the problem, what was it again? Um, x squared minus 9. Thank you. Okay. So we have f of x equals x squared minus 9, and then with confidence, we're going to find f of negative 3. So we have f of negative 3. To find it, we're going to substitute a negative 3 for the input of x. So we have x, which is negative 3. What are we going to do to it? We're going to square it and then subtract 9. As we keep our cool, square of 9, square of 9, square of negative 3 will give us 9. Then we bring down the rest of the problem. And then same speech. A uh, difference of 9 and itself will give us 0. And if this was the answer, I will box it and move on. But again, it's only a part of the puzzle. Okay, It's a piece of the puzzle or whatever I'm trying to say. So I want to tell myself what equals 0. I'm like, oh, it's f of negative 3 that equals 0. So we just finished evaluating each function at negative 3. Now it's time to subtract. So it's later. So we have that g minus f of negative 3. How do we find it? We're going to take g of negative 3, which in this case is negative 6. Operation is minus and subtract from it f of negative 3, which is 0. Last time I checked, difference of negative 6 and 0 is negative 6. And then same speech. If we didn't get negative 6 before, I'm going to start crying. Let's see. Oh, we got it. Okay. So same problem. So no matter how you do it, uh, whether you add now, add or subtract now, and evaluate later and vice versa, we should get the same answer. Okay, guys. That's my time. Until next time.